So I'm going to be talking today about how to create incredibly valuable and long-lasting influence as an author. As an author coach, I work with experts and thought leaders around the world to get their message into writing. One of the things I've noticed working with these individuals is that they show up with several different forms of motivation. One is that they want to create credibility. Two is that they want to build their business. But the underlying motivation of all of it is that they want to make a really powerful difference. And that's where the influence piece comes in. One of the things I started looking around at in my industry is noticing that there's a huge push towards marketing. Now, marketing a book is important. It does sell books, and it does build business. But it's done in such a way that the assumption seems to be as if if you sell books, you're going to have an impact, and you're going to make a difference, and things will change. That's not always true. How many books have made the bestseller list and then faded into history, never really actually creating any change? How many of you have purchased a book because you thought it was great, the marketing was great, and it sat on your shelf for 10 years? <laughs> exactly. So just because you're selling books does not necessarily mean you're making a difference. Because what both authors did was create what I call a values-based controversy. Silent Spring showed readers how pesticide usage in one area can get into the water streams and not only do damage there, but also show up in somebody's tap water in their home and be digested by their children hundreds of miles away. Those are family values. She tapped into her reader's sense of being and made it personal. She made them care. And she did it in a way that was beautifully done. It was all based on research, but she, able, she was able to take that research and make it make sense to her readers. One of the beautiful things about these two authors is that they both engaged in the debate as well. Carson, of course, did it consciously and intentionally and strategically. Kuhn, like I said, did it more by accident. He was doing it more in response. He was frustrated in many ways that some of his ideas he thought were misinterpreted. But he did enter the debate. And what that did for both authors was to keep the snowball going and growing until the changes occurred that ultimately resulted. And if there is one lesson that I could share with experts, thought leaders, or anybody else wanting to write nonfiction, it would be this. Sales do not create influence. But influence does create sales. If you focus first on what your passion is and you follow that, you're going to wind up in a place that is different than anybody else has been. Share that vision and follow that passion. From there, connect with who your audience is at a values-based level and get them engaged in the argument. Because that is what's going to connect with them. That is what they are going to internalize and make decisions on. And that's where the change comes in the rest of their lives. Now, if you have a great marketing plan and focus on influence first, you can create incredible magic. But the first focus is definitely influence. Because like I said, sales do not create influence itself. But influence will create sales. Thank you.